we want to know what is the volume of the model. And, and then we'll look at part B. So to find the volume of, of a shape like this, it's conveniently broken down into three-dimensional shapes that are easy to work with. So for example, up here we have a hemisphere. And a hemisphere is just a half of a sphere. So the volume of a hemisphere will end up equaling one half of the volume of a sphere, which is four thirds pi r cubed. So we can find that in a moment. And you, you can tell the hemisphere because they give you this dot right here, which indicates it's the center point of this of this spherical shape, and that these dotted lines right here and here are both represent the radius of the sphere, which means since the radius go to the halfway point and reach the center, it's the half of the height, that this thing really is half of a sphere. It's a, it's a hemisphere. And then, then in the middle here, we have a cylinder, right? And the volume of a cylinder is found by multiplying the area of the circle, pi r squared, that's the area of the circle, times the height of the sphere. So we'll come back to the volume of that cylinder. And over here we have a cone. Now a cone, if you've looked at this before, um, you find the area of the circle at the base, multiply it by the height, and then divide by 3. And the volume of a cone, essentially, the reason we divide by 3 or multiply by a third, right, same thing, is that we take... Right, the area of the circle at the bottom, pi r squared, and multiply it by the height. And then we divide by 3 because if this cone was put into a cylinder of the same height and width, it would be one-third of that cylinder. So essentially, when we find the volume of a cone, we're finding one-third of a cylinder. And you can see the, the formula for the volume of a cylinder right in this part right here. So essentially, it, when you're finding the volume of a cone, this approach shows you that it really is one-third of a, of a cylinder of the same height. So let's put all this together. Let's find the volume of these shapes. And then I think we're ready to look at part B. So to find the volume of these shapes, uh, I'm gonna first going to realize that, well, they all are dealing with almost the same radius, right? Or the exact same radius. Here's the radius of the cone and the cylinder. It's 3 inches. And the, and the radius here, right, of the, of the sphere is also 3. So it looks like no matter what, my radius is going to be equal to 3 inches. And that might save me a little bit of time. Let's start with the cylinder. So the volume of the cylinder is, is going, I'll put the volume of CYL, cylinder, it's going to equal 9, that's R squared, 3 times 3, the radius squared, times the height of 12 times pi. Simplifying this, what is 9 times 12? I, I keep thinking this is 118 for some reason, but it, it's really 108, right? And then times pi. So the volume of this cylinder here is 108 pi cubic inches. Now, why, why did I do that? Well, that leads me right to the cone. Now, this cone is also a third of the height of the cylinder. So let's think about how that might affect the volume, and we might see a, an interesting connection there. But here, the radius, again, is 3, so r squared is 9. So we have 1 third times pi times 9 times the height of 4. And what does that equal? Well, 9 times a third, we can change the order we're multiplying, is just 3. And 3 times 4 is 12, so here the volume of the cone, right, volume of the cone is equal to 12 pi. And if we look at the connection there, does 12 go into 108? Well, yeah, 9 times. And that kind of makes sense, right, because this cone is 3 times shorter than the cylinder, so this cone... Um, in terms of height is a third, and that reduces the volume overall by a third. But also the cone itself is a third of the, of the cylinder. So you could have predicted the volume of this cone would be one-ninth of the volume of the cylinder because it is both a third in height and it's a cone, so it's a third of the volume. So it's a third of a third. So that's, that's a nice way to predict the volume there of the cone. And next we have the volume of the, of the hemisphere. Now the volume of the hemisphere is, has a height or a radius of three inches. And we can think about this for a moment. The, the, the height of this hemisphere is one-fourth of the height of the cylinder. And that might help us see something. It'll, it'll be a little bit tougher. So r cubed, now instead of r squared, and r is 3. What's r cubed? Well, that's 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So we get, we're doing half of the volume of a, of a sphere. So 4 thirds, right in this order, times 27, right, times pi. Simplify this. To find a third, I just divide by 3. So before I multiply by 4, 
I'm going to take 27 divided by 3. That's equal to 9. And now, before I multiply 4 and 9, I'm going to divide 4 by 2. Right? That'll happen eventually. I'm just changing the order. And now we get 2 times 9, or 18 pi. So what does all this mean? This is a little bit tougher to see because, first of all, a sphere is two-thirds of a cylinder of equal height. There's another way to write the volume of a, of a sphere. You can, instead of writing four-thirds pi r cubed, like we did here, you can write the volume of a sphere is equal to two-thirds pi r squared h, two-thirds of a, of a cylinder. So if this, if this sphere was the same height as the cylinder, they would have an equal, um, an equal volume. But the height is a fourth. So the volume, right, has to be certainly f at least um, four times less than this volume right here. And, and the fun part here is to think about, well, how does two-thirds affect that? And I'll leave that to you for fun. But realize that the, the volume here can be predicted as well because the height is reduced. And we know the relationship between a, a sphere and a cylinder. Of course, this is a hemisphere, which is a little bit different. So, so now we put all this together to find the total surface area of the cone, 12 pi, the cylinder, 108, and the hemisphere, 18 pi. 18 and 12 is, is 30, right? Plus 108, we get 138 pi. Now, if you're approximating pi to some value, I'll, I'll just use 3, 138 times 3, we get 414, although you might want to use a better approximation of 4. So it's of, of, of pi, so you get about 414 cubic inches. Now the, the, the fun question here is in part B. It says, if one inch in the model represents 20 feet in the actual submarine, what is the volume of the actual submarine? Well, don't just take 414 and multiply it by 20. Um, because this model, when it scales up, will be 20 feet bigger in height, 20 feet bigger in width, and 20 feet bigger in length. It's 20 times larger in every direction, which means that the total volume will be 20 times larger in every direction. So our new volume, right, let's go back to this number right here, you can think of it as 138 pi, the total volume, times 20, times 20, times 20 for the actual size here. And what will that be? Let's just take 138 times 20, times 20, times 20, right? Over a million, 104,000 pi cubic inches, but let's estimate pi here, maybe 3.1415 or about three, whatever. We get over three and a half million cubic feet representing the volume of the submarine. Pretty cool stuff. All right, thanks a lot.